meet 21-year-old student Caroline Reader, a glamorous undergraduate who is seriously overdrawn. I love champagne, I love sushi, I love diamonds, I love clothes. Oh. Her course in retail management appears to have taught her only one thing, how to shop. 420 pounds. That's not bad, actually. I thought it would be more. In just three years, Caroline has notched up a massive £14,000 worth of debt, even though her university fees and living costs are paid directly by her parents. Experts Jay Hunt and Benjamin Fry have just five weeks to turn Caroline's life around. Jay will find practical ways to make Caroline's money go further. Do you know what that is? It's called a purse. It's where you put cash, <laughs> cash? on an evening. What's yeah. that? Benjamin will get emotional as he tackles the deeper issues behind Caroline's spending. How are you? Good, thank you. I'm just wondering if there's a quality to the spending which is communicating some resentment towards your parents. Will they be able to wean Caroline from her expensive addiction? I don't really need sort of the clothes and the handbags and the shoes I buy. I don't know, sometimes I just can't seem to stop. Caroline is in her third year studying retail management at Loughborough University. Although Benjamin and Jay have never met her, Caroline has given them access to her student digs, so they can pick up pointers for why she's in so much debt. Benjamin is looking for the psychological motives driving Caroline's spending, while Jay is out to spot where the money is actually going. Wow. This doesn't look like a student's room. Look at this. I mean, nice Marc Jacobs skirt. Is that posh? Yeah, well, it's not cheap. Sonia Raikel, Dolce & Gabbana, DKNY. I mean, look at all of this. It's hardly what you call practical shoes for walking around campus, is it? Yeah, all you wouldn't these... get home from the student bar in those shoes, would I you? No. And this, you know, very, very grown-up makeup labels. I mean, quite a sophisticated collection here. This is not cosmetics on a budget. So do you think it's like some kind of fantasy life where she's pretending not to really be a student? If all this stuff was in a different flat, I would not be surprised that this was a sort of, you know, the contents are of a 30-something professional. As part of her course, Caroline spent the last academic year in Nice, picking up a nice tan and some expensive habits. I had a year out in France, I had a really glamorous year, I was doing event planning, I was like going to amazing parties, going out for dinner every night, and to go back just to slumming it again, it's just, it's just so hard and it's just, it's just not me, it's not what I want to do. I basically, I want my degree and if I could graduate tomorrow, then I would. I'm interested in her family photos, which aren't actually mm. family photos, they're really all photos of her friends and her boyfriend. My boyfriend's called James. He lives in London. He works for Merrill Lynch. We like pretty much the same things, although James is a lot more careful with his money. <laughs> for me, this shows possibly that the connection with the family is not as strong as the connection that she wants to have with her ideal future. Maybe there's some stuff that I can talk to her about there, see if there's an issue there. I saw here part of her creative writing that she's very keen on. Well, I'm writing a few stories at the moment um, based on Hattie, the shopaholic, who is my alter ego. There was always that sickening feeling that hit Hattie's stomach. Every time a cashier swiped her card through the machine, would it go through? It was a feeling Hattie loathed, yet at the same time gave her an adrenaline rush like nothing else in the world, except maybe the oblivion at Alton Towers. That's a clear sign of addictive behaviour, isn't it? To do something that really gives you a rush in the moment mm but actually sabotages the broader fabric of your life. I notice here something, one of the few things she has stuck on the wall is a oh, food, food diary. diary. I'm gonna go and raid her cupboard to right. see what she's buying. As far as Caroline's concerned, being a student doesn't mean having Look. to rough it. Oh. You can have a nose and everybody else's cupboards. Oh, exciting. Nothing there. Oh look, here we go. Beans. Students' cupboards, Caroline. Ah, ha, ha. look at that. Look at this. Nice little That'll taste of champagne if you're feeling down. Midnight moment. Ooh. Oh, haha. Spot Caroline's shelf. 
What you got? Two chicken fillets in red wine sauce, mm. £3.49. Salmon fillets with watercress sauce, £3.99. Well, that'd be eight quid for two dinners. It's not really a student way to eat, is it? Well, look, here are her bank statements. They look very nice and neatly done. Nicely organised all Make this Make our stuff, job easy. What's that at the top? Total in? 833 in, 1,346 out. But look, the clothes. 571. Well, she knows what she's spending and clearly it mm, keeps it in a very orderly way. So it must be an anxiety to her. She knows she's spending too she much. She knows she's doing it. She writes about spending too much. She writes about wanting to be able to do something about it. But she just can't stop. Upon graduation, the average student debt is £8,000. Despite doing a retail management course with modules on accountancy and economics, Caroline's £14,000 debt is becoming unmanageable, even though her university fees and living costs are covered by her parents. As Benjamin and Jay will soon discover, Caroline's shopping habits are hard to break. Obviously, I know I don't need all the clothes, and I, I probably wear about a third of the clothes I've got, but I'm the kind of girl who does things on impulse, so if I see something, I'll get it. Very very tempted to get this. I try and hold for no, as I say, but I just don't think it's healthy for me to, or, you know, my husband to sort of say, OK, we'll sort it for you. She's not really the typical student. She won't really eat whole food. She doesn't dress like a student. Always has something on you every day. She, a bit of an extrovert. She likes the nice things in life. That is gorgeous. And sometimes when I just sit down at home and I work it all out, I do get quite upset about it. If Caroline wants to wake up to reality, she's going to need a good jolt. Following their poke around her room, Benjamin and Jay have identified two of Caroline's most extravagant areas of spending. Hello! So it's time for her to meet the experts and get a shocking demonstration. Jolly good. Now I want to show you something in here. It's going to be a bit of a shock, but right. that's the plan. Okay. So after you, in you go. <laughs> now, what do you think of this? Have a seat here, head of the table. See, so if you sit there, you can see the whole way down, all laid out for you. Now, Caroline, what this represents is your expenditure annually on food <laughs> going out. Each plate is a week's expenditure of £170 a week, and that adds up to £5,100 per annum, which you spend on eating out. Now, that's not the end of the story, because we also know that your parents pay for your meals at college in advance. Yeah, it has. Yeah. So, most of this money is spent on things that you actually don't even need to spend a penny on. Yeah. I guess it's a bit of a waste. <laughs> do you have any idea of how much you're spending? Do you have like a running total that you know by the day or by the week? Not for you, no. <laughs> now, Caroline, as if this hasn't been bad enough, I want you to just come down here and have a look at something else. After you. Come down here. I want you to meet this nice bevy of girls <laughs> along here. These girls lined up here are illustrating a point because each one of the wigs that they're wearing represents £100 which you spend in a year on your very nice, I must admit, <laughs> haircut and that adds up to £1,600 a year on your hair which is the sort of money that somebody, you know, in their late 20s with a fairly decent job would be paying out. It's quite a lot for, out of a student budget mm -hmm. to be spending on hair. I've been to the one on campus and they just cut it awful. It looked hideous. So I just, um, even when I go to one like that, I have to go for an emergency repair at Tony and Guy, so I might as well just get it nice first time. Do you feel shocked at all again seeing it all in one place and hearing the amount of money mm. you spend in a year? Yeah. Does it make you feel like, well, maybe I should try and spend less money on my hair and find alternatives? Because mm -hmm. that's something we can help you with, finding other ways to achieve the similar results for less money. Yeah, good idea. In order to get her debt under control, Caroline needs to pare down her spending to the bare essentials. So Benjamin and Jay have decided to give Caroline a serving of cold turkey.
If we asked you how much you actually get through spending money a week, what do you think you get through in an average week? Um, I, uh, it's hard to give an estimate really because I, you know, it depends if I'm staying around Loughborough. Um, in that case, I don't really spend much, or if I'm going to London, um, I spend more. But I guess I put an, um, an average on about 150 pounds a week. Right. So you think it's 150? Um, I'm wondering if it would surprise you to learn that it is actually 355 pounds, no which way. is this much money each week, every week. Are you that surprised? Right. I don't think that's right. <laughs> are, yeah. you, are you surprised at how much? Mm. Yeah, very. What we would like to do with you is to talk to you now about what you think you could live on for seven days because we'd like you to sort of experience a cold turkey and get away with the absolute minimum that you could possibly spend. What do you think is a fair figure to start with? £100. £100 for a week? I think we're going to have to try a bit harder than that. 70? Mm. 50? No way, not 50. Come like, on, all your, all your stuff's paid for at university. What, what do you need the money for? Well, if we make it 60, I'd rather give you an extra £10 <laughs> and have you committed to thinking that you can actually live on that rather than go a bit lower and then you think, well, what's the hell in trying? Because I know I can never do that anyway. So I think £60. OK. Does that sound fair enough? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you £60 in cash and you are going to take that away and start your week of cold turkey. And you'll really, really try for seven days, yeah? Yeah, promise. OK. But Caroline's promise is hard to keep. It seems that Benjamin and Jay's shock tactics have backfired, and Caroline is fighting back. I hadn't even talked to them before, ever. And the first thing to say to me is, like, what are you doing? You know, this is what you do. And they don't even know me. Yeah, they made me feel like um, just a greedy pig just because they've chosen food, which is, like, just, I don't know, just tables full of food. And maybe if they'd chosen something else instead, I wouldn't have felt so... One of Caroline's biggest areas of expenditure is travel, and Cold Turkey Week is no exception. To give herself a boost, Caroline has jumped on the first train to London to get some TLC from boyfriend James, blowing a gaping hole in her cold turkey budget in the process. They gave me £60 to last a week, starting from today, um, of which I've just spent more than half on my train ticket to London. <laughs> Which is not going to stop good time girl Caroline soaking up the London nightlife. James doesn't come to visit me that often in Loughborough. He's probably been up twice in the past year, but I don't blame him because I'd much rather come down to London for the weekend. How much money did you spend? Not a couple that. of grams? No, not that much. No? You didn't buy the handbag or the dress or the shoes? It's Monday morning, back in Loughborough, day three of Caroline's cold turkey. And if you thought that Caroline had fallen at the first hurdle, think again. Despite the upset, it seems the expert shock tactics have started to sink in. Just thought, right, I'm going to prove them wrong. <laughs> so they can't be mean to me anymore. <laughs> and, um, and so I went to London and on the Friday night I just basically didn't spend any money. We went to the theatre and obviously James had already paid for that and everything. And then we went out for a few drinks and then because I'd paid for the train, James said, oh, well, I'll get these drinks, which was fine. And then instead of getting a taxi, which we usually would after the tubes have all finished, um, we got the night bus. <laughs> the night bus was, I think it was £1.40, whereas a taxi would have been easily 20 quid, 20, 25. It's good saving there. <laughs> Now, for the first time, Caroline is trying student life on a student budget. Today has been good too. I haven't spent any money apart from <laughs> um, 
and Orange Juice and the Financial Times and the Independent newspaper. Um, and that's all. If Caroline is to make a permanent change to her spending habits, she'll need to find the reasons behind her behaviour. Self-help author and entrepreneur Benjamin Fry has experienced firsthand the healing power of therapy. He thinks that Caroline's excessive spending habits may be a cry for attention, probably from her family. So what I'm looking for is clues uh, to give us exercises that we can do to help relieve what I see as unconscious emotional pressure on you to spend money. So one of the places that we look for clues when trying to think about the psychological implications of behaviour is just to understand better your family and your relationships there. Okay, well, yeah, I've got one sister, Charlotte, who's 26, so five years older than me. I think when we were younger, we used to fall out quite a lot. Um, not entirely sure why. I think probably the sort of the jealousy thing. She's always been really successful. She's really outgoing. Um, she's always gotten really well at the school and everything, and now she's just got the most amazing job. And. Um, so, yeah, I, What's always, so amazing about her job? It's just, she's like, um, she's a brand manager and she lives in Paris now and it's well paid and she loves it and she just always, you know, I'm so envious of the way she like really enjoys her career. Yeah. She's like totally into it. So you're still and, jealous of her? <laughs> well, I'm not jealous. I'm now I'm more proud of her. Yeah. And I like, you know. But envious, like Yeah. Saying. Benjamin suspects that Caroline's envy of her older sister's lifestyle may be fueling her current spending problems. Yeah. Um, and there was an envious relationship between the sisters, yeah. a kind of sibling rivalry, which is quite common. Yeah. How did your mother navigate that, do you think? I don't think she's... I mean, she never did anything... She never treated us um, differently to make us jealous of each other. Yeah. I think it's just the whole... I don't know, girl thing. Yeah. I'm just wondering if there's a quality to the spending which is communicating some resentment towards your parents. I think every sort of every problem every problem someone has, you always try and bring it down to the parents and and you know, when you were younger, when you're two years old, but I don't know, I don't know if I agree with that. So you never felt that you were the least favoured sibling? No, anyway? no, never. Okay, well, that's good. The sibling rivalry was interesting, and I think that when one sibling's jealous of the other sibling, sometimes they can become competitive. And it does seem that Caroline perhaps is being competitive with her sister with the spending. That's not really something that's very constructive, and all it's doing is getting her into debt. So hopefully we can pursue that a bit further later on. I got a bit offended, to be honest, when he sort of started um, making assumptions and accusations about my childhood, which he has no idea about. You know, I've got such a good relationship with my parents, and my family, that um, some of the things he's saying, you know, just sort of annoyed me. If Caroline would normally resort to a slap-up meal when she's upset, she's in for a shock. This is cold turkey week, so she'd better get used to going a la canteen. That's a new in here for a while, Cass. I know. Trying to cut back on money. Yeah. Got a bit of a budget set for this week, so thought I'd really? slum it in the dining hall. I usually go out for dinner like two, two, three times a week, which is silly because all my dinners are paid for at uni, but they're just gross, like school dinners. Blech. It's the first time in months that Caroline has eaten in the dining hall. It's not just cheap, it's free, since her university meals are already paid for by her parents at a cost of £1,112 per year. Eating here, instead of eating out, would save Caroline from spending a lip-smacking £5,100. What time of year is the union? For the first time in a couple of weeks, well, I'd say a couple of months, Caroline has been into the dining hall. She came with me for lunch after our lecture and sat there and all our friends were like, oh, Caroline, where have you been for the past six months? Which was quite funny. So maybe it's a start. Ever since I met the experts last Friday, I've been eating every meal in the dining hall. So I haven't bought any little treats from Marks and Spencers. <laughs> I've been a good girl. For Caroline to get back in the black, she'll have to make savings across the board. Benjamin and Jay have sent her to see Alan Rapley, who runs a free debt advisory service, to get the hard facts on her financial shortcomings. From the figures, uh, £1,400 you're spending, £700 you're getting in. 
something's got to give. What sort of figure would you think you'd be looking at for an income to support that? What, yearly? 20,000? Up Sorry. a little bit. 22. Keep going. 25. If Caroline thinks she can earn that little to spend that much, she's in for a nasty surprise. We're looking at an income of about 29, 30,000 in order to maintain your present lifestyle at the spending rate that you're... Does that surprise you? Shock um, you? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. The kind of job that I needed to sort of cover the amount of spending was like, um, like a 28 grand um, a year job, which of course I'd love to get next year. But the kind of jobs I've been looking at are sort of like low twenties. So even then, like, I'm going to have to cut down. It's the end of cold turkey week, and Caroline is heading in the right direction. With £14,000 worth of debt, she has been forced to look hard at every area of her spending. She's come to report back to Jay on her progress. So you survived your seven days of cold turkey. Was it very hard? Um, no, it was quite fun, to be honest. I think I spent £96 altogether. But we only gave you 60 Yes, but I was a bit creative, and um, I managed to take two pairs of trousers back oh, on Saturday. Oh, good idea. No, so that came to 80 Oh, did it? Yeah. So that's extra money. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was a good that idea. Allowed? Yeah, no, that's allowed. I'm no I was problem. trying to be a bit creative, but it was quite weird actually, just spending cash and not mm. not putting things on card because it does make you a lot more aware. Now I know you went to see Alan. What we've come up with is a sort of new budget, which is going to be your template for how we're going to cut your current expenditure, which is running at fourteen hundred pounds a month basically needs to be cut to 700. So train fare here at the moment, we've got 108 pounds a month, because obviously you're coming down to London, and the recommended expenditure is 59. Groceries, food and housekeeping, at the moment 265, recommended expenditure 130. At the moment of your current 1,400 pounds a month, 200 pounds a month, goes on your clothes and shoes. Recommended expenditure, zero. zero. <laughs> that's <you>? mean. <laughs> what do you think about that? I think that's impossible. Do you? Yeah. Absolutely zero. impossible. Zero. Yeah. OK, well, <laughs> bearing in mind that is zero, what I think is a good idea for you is that you take some of the existing clothes that you've got, there is nothing to stop you selling those mm. and from the the money that you raise from selling that is totally and utterly your money to spend on some new things if that's what you want to do with it caroline has decided to go home to beverly in east yorkshire to dust down her old clothes on the plus side it's the ideal opportunity to discuss the childhood issues that benjamin raised with another expert her mum yeah we all like nice things you know my mother, she, as I say, she's 85 and she's, she's always been glamorous, you know, she's always liked nice things and lovely clothes and things like that. So probably it's um, in her genes. <laughs> Caroline is from a hard-working family. Her dad has spent the last 20 years running his own haulage business, which he built from scratch. And Caroline's obsession with her hair could be inherited from her mum, a retired hairdresser. You had a good trip? Yeah, good, thank you. Good. While some students will go entire terms in the same jeans and T-shirt, shopaholic Caroline has gone to the other extreme. She has so many clothes and shoes that she's turned her parents' house into a giant walk-in wardrobe. We've got boxes in the garage that we brought home from Nice, and up above the garage there are black bin liner bags full of probably shoes and various things, you know. I'm definitely saying those. I've never worn them. Never worn them? Why did you buy them? Because I liked her at the time. She's a bit of a hoarder, really. There's one. one. That's two. Five. five six, six. Seven. Do you really need ten swimsuits? Yeah. She's a little bit sentimental. She'll remember, you know, wearing this particular thing. And, you know, she had such fun in it. Even though she knows she'll never wear it again, she likes to keep it. Oh, I like that. You've had it years, Caroline. I know. 
but I can't bear to part with it. I don't like throwing things out. <laughs> I'm quite bad at that. No, I don't like that. Don't you? Oh. <clears throat> it's Hawaiian night. Oh, one's on and that's it. <laughs> I mean, all these things you just hoard, and you, when you're going somewhere special, you never want to wear them, do you? Mm. Mm? Just because mm -hmm. you've liked them doesn't mean that you go on liking them forever. Yeah. No. no. Right, so we have these. Oh, well done, darling. That was hard for you, was it? Mm? With the clothes boxed up and ready for resale, there's a rare chance for Caroline to sit down with her mum and open up. Why do you think it is then? Why do you think you do shop? Yeah, I guess it's you know has got a lot to do with me and Shaw, and um, has it, darling? me sort of being a bit jealous of, of her. Charlotte and sort of envious of her lifestyle because I was five years younger. And Caroline and I, you know, we never sort of hated each other. We never kind of fell out, um, but we weren't big parts of each other's lives whilst growing up. Really, Caroline's always been desperate for acceptance from Charlotte. And, uh, but Charlotte's always been the kind of... She's always been busy off doing her own thing and uh, never really had time for Caroline. Not jealous, but just envious. No, you're not, sorry. Oh, I don't know, yeah, yeah. Or do, do you think it's... You hope that someday maybe you'll yeah. be able to have something similar? Yeah. Well, you will, darling, this five years. Can't you wait? <laughs> <laughs> <Can't you> wait? <laughs> do now. <laughs> Caroline seems to want instant gratification in life. Um, and... I'm sure she does aspire to have um, a nice home, you know, nice things, nice family. Caroline doesn't always recognise the hard work that goes behind um, what my father and mother have got um, and what, what I've got as well. Yeah, could anything without working for it. And yeah. I've always If you as we well, like just... all these lovely things and lovely house, but you know, it doesn't come easy. And you can't just go spending and spending and Mm. Yeah. I'm really glad I went to um, going to see my mum today. It was, I don't know, I thought it would be a little bit embarrassing and um, I guess it was a bit awkward at times because, I don't know, we never really talk about things like that usually. You know, I feel a lot better now and like everything's in the open and I'm not hiding anything. <laughs> With the month's clothes budget set at naught pounds and naught pence, Caroline has to sell her old clothes in order to raise the cash for new ones. The clothes have been lovingly folded and lumped across to the Loughborough Union. Caroline's flogging them off to her fellow students, although one or two of the more exotic purchases may prove harder to shift. Look at these shoes! <laughs> what are them? <laughs> Do you like them? Christmas present from me to Caroline last year in the sale box. Before like seeing Jay, I guess I'd buy probably about three or four impulse buys a week on clothes. Most of which are here. <laughs> OK, this is about £35. I bought it about three weeks ago and actually hate it. It's gross. <laughs> Do you can buy a handbag going cheap. How much did you say? £5? Yeah. <laughs> OK, that's three pounds. A girl's just bought two of my favourite, well, what were my favourite tops, uh, four pounds each. I christened your one for four pounds and I bought it for, like, 50. I feel like crying. What's that? that? 12. Is that OK? Looking at it all, hung up there and, like, being sold for a few pounds, it just seems like a waste of money and I feel like I've just wasted so much money in the past. 40. By the end of the day, Caroline's made £120. I earned a lot uh, more than I thought because, like, up till about half an hour ago, I'd only got... I know, in the first hour, I'd only got, like, 50p. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm really pleased. Usually, Caroline wouldn't think twice about blowing the entire 120 on one top. So, before she does, lifestyle expert Jay has whisked her down to the London Olympia Winter Fashion Fair to prove that being fashion conscious doesn't have to break the bank. The annual fashion fair is run by wholesalers and open to the public. It's the perfect place to hoover up end-of-season designer goods at bargain basement prices. Jay's first lesson for Caroline? That some of the best buys are the most versatile. 
See, that's the sort of thing I think is quite a good purchase for you. Because mm. if you're walking around university wearing it, it's practical and it's going to keep you warm with jeans. Yeah. Something like that is going to do you three ways and you can sort of have a bit of fun customising it and making it your own. Mm. Is that something you'd sort of pick up? Yeah, or? yeah, it's cool. I'll so you don't mind? The, prefer the brown? <laughs> OK. <laughs> That's OK, you're allowed. <laughs> Just trying to see. Let's have a look. Was £495 retail, £275. So it's still quite expensive. I oh, really like that. You like that, yeah. yeah. Do you know what that is? It's called a purse. <laughs> it's where you put cash <laughs> when you go out cash? of an evening. What's yeah. that? I guess at the moment I do just sort of buy a lot of <laughs> that I don't need. But do you wait for the sales? No. So you're just right in there like that, impulse buy, bang. OK. So those you've already got, mm. how much are they here? 25 £25. Quid. What did like Caroline pay? 126. 126 So you're starting to get the picture now. What do you think of that? I love that. Really love that. So you reduced from 175 49 What's fascinating about you is that you've been so busy looking up here <laughs> that you haven't noticed what I've noticed. One pound box. No way. See? Get rifling. <laughs> Caroline has bagged herself a £49 designer top and seven £1 t-shirts. From the £120 she raised from her clothes sale, she's still got £64 remaining. Digging out designer sales is one way to save money. But with a little creative flair, the remaining £64 can be used to deck out an entire wardrobe with top-end designer looks at a fraction of the price. Jay takes Caroline to a haberdashery shop to show her the ropes and more specifically, the buttons and threads. Here today, I know how you look is still really important to you. That's absolutely fine. But what I wanted to explore is rather than spending money on new clothes, mm -hmm. is looking at how we can customise some of the old stuff you've got and just look at ideas for using your creativity a bit. So are you up for that? Yeah, definitely. OK, let's go, let's go in here. I would guarantee that no two people would come yeah, out of here the with the same thing, which is sort of what makes it fun, really. You did really brilliantly at Olympia and pulled loads oh, of those no, really fantastic T-shirts. <laughs> one pound Think about bin. That all the time, yeah. You know, this is <laughs> six fifty a meter. If you buy a couple of meters of this and sort of personalise something, I think one you'd really like it, and two, you know, you've got something sort of quite funky mm. that that you've sort of had a hand yeah. in doing. I think you'd quite enjoy doing yeah, that. Yeah, it would be fun. So that comes to 38.95. Thanks very much. Thanks. See you. Thank Bye. you. Great. Well, buying it's one thing, but now we've got to go and put it all together, oh, OK? Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that you would get sort of an equal sense of satisfaction wearing something out and getting compliments on it, you know, if you made it rather than if you'd bought it? Do you think there'd be any difference? Yeah, I guess you'd probably get more satisfaction, actually, because it's not just something you've actually sort of created in your ideas that are getting mm. complimented rather than just, you know, buying, having bought something already made. Right, Dave, what you do you think about that? Hey, cool. That didn't take long at no, all. No. I think that looks really nice. Yeah. Because you are creative, aren't you? Mm. So all your storytelling and everything. Yeah. Have you always been creative? Yeah, I guess so. I have. Really? really? Um, I've always sort of, like, um, written little stories and poems and always, like, made all my Christmas ca birthday cards and do... Right, I, lo I love doing... Just doing little things mm. for people. So, yeah, I guess I have. You could have a go at finishing this. Yeah. I mean, this is just really cool. I can't wait to wear it. <laughs> Try it on. Let's see what it... <laughs> Your new Elvis coat. <laughs> yeah. I think it's really nice. Yeah? I spent about £40 in the shop, which wasn't too bad, because I got probably enough material and beads to make, um, to customise, you know, about eight tops, really. Um, so if you compare that to the price that I would pay for eight new tops at probably £50 each, you know, I mean, it's just a huge saving and it just feels really good. There's one more saving Jay wants her to make, 
Caroline usually spends £140 on a cut and colour. But with only £50 in her monthly hair budget, Jay has booked Caroline an appointment with a trainee. A cheap shortcut for anyone wanting up to the minute styles. Okay. I'm going to keep the lens. Um, I'm going to have it layered, a bit of a fringe. This is a picture that I quite like. So I'm a bit nervous. That's £20 equal in <laughs> By spending just £20 on a haircut and colour compared to the usual £140, Caroline is comfortably within her monthly allowance of £50. It was definitely a bargain. Usually this kind of um, style would cost about £100 at least. Um, and I got 20 <laughs> Some things won't be so easy to cut. Caroline's new travel budget has been slashed from £108 to only £59. Boyfriend James works long hours in IT for a London bank and prefers Caroline to do the travelling. Taking the coach may be the cheaper option, but with a journey time of three hours each way, it takes over twice as long as the train. Caroline has persuaded James to come to Loughborough to sample all the delights the town has to offer. Before, I'd just, like, jump on a train and, and go and see him and not really worry about the cost, but now, because of my new budget, um, I can't really do that, so... It's been a bit rubbish, to be honest. With Loughborough a little short on sushi bars, Caroline and James go down under for an Australian restaurant where James finally gets to meet the new financially aware Caroline. So you've got £59 travel budget. Yeah, so that's like, I can come up to London twice a month, so... Well, it's £20 train ticket, though. Yeah, but James is like tube and everything. Add on that and it's two times a month. And so if you've got to agree to come here two times a month or whatever... Yeah. Well, I'm not just a bit busier, lady. You're just a bit busier. <laughs> hey, but I think you could make that £59 go further because you can just buy your... If you buy your train ticket in advance, there's a bit more planning. I and you can just buy it in advance and it's yeah, cheaper. Why do you ever plan a thing? Well, you I, never want to. I always I, say, I plan things slightly weekend? less. No, you don't. Yeah, you do. I always say, what about well, this you, weekend? You're like, oh, I don't know about that because I might well, you, be you should this. say, James, I've got this yeah, budget. I do. I, I need do to make say it go. I say that. I really need to know. And you always say... Oh, I don't like playing out of bands. Don't get defensive. I'm not, it's a Definitely getting defensive. Can we talk about this another time? Oh, yeah, OK. <laughs> Silly. Yeah, but you can't just say that. You can't just say expect me to come down so many times a month. I didn't just say that. Yeah, you did. Me and James had a bit of disagreement. Basically, he, he seemed to be especially annoyed about the fact that I was so careless with money and that um, I'd been given so many opportunities. I could have actually saved so much money, but um, instead I've just blown it and have nothing to show for it. And I guess all the things he was saying were really true, but that's why it hurt so much, I guess. Mm. Mm -hmm. The next day, after patching things up, Caroline and James part on good terms. By persuading James to do the running, Caroline has made savings to her travel budget and is well on the way to breaking the vicious cycle of spending. With the proceeds of her clothes sale, she has picked up a few designer bargains and saved over £100 on a haircut and colour. Caroline has also made the first steps towards facing the underlying reasons for her wayward spending by getting her mum's thoughts on the sibling rivalry. If Caroline is to find some long-term security, she'll have to stop running off to London and find something a little closer to home. 
I think Caroline's doing really well with her clothing budget. At the beginning, there was a bit of a resistance, but now I think you know she is making great strides, and she is definitely, definitely listening and taking things on board. I know that she's having a bit of trouble with her travel budget. I know it's been a point of friction for her because it's quite expensive for her to get down to yeah. London all the time. I think she's sort of been bolting down to London and not even given herself a second to find something that she might like to do up here. I don't think that Caroline's really going to enjoy being here until she feels fulfilled mm. in a sense of actually enjoying her life in Loughborough. Yeah. And of course at the moment there's an emptiness here, so of course she's running off different places left, right and centre. Mm. It would be much more calming for her, much more beneficial to her financially to actually find that centre here. Benjamin and Jay come up with a plan. Caroline has inherited a love of fast cars from her father, so they've brought her to Donington Racetrack in Leicestershire to prove that fast living doesn't always mean loose purse strings. Well, we've brought you here today to Donington Park, which is only about 15 minutes away from you, because what we thought we'd do is try and, you know, spend some time doing something near to you, because obviously every time you're going down to London at a weekend, that's £200 on money spent on clothes, going out, nice restaurants, all the rest of it. So we thought, sort of dressed down fun up here, £30, we're going to take you buggy racing and see if we can give you the same adrenaline rush from that that you get flashing your plastic. So what do you reckon? Yeah, I'm really excited. It's yeah. cool. Yeah, I'm, um, I love cars and driving. and I didn't really realise this was here and that you could actually have a go for yourself, so I'm very excited. Mind your new hairstyle. Four, three, two, one. Caroline's having a blast, and it's certainly cheaper than an afternoon shopping. But if she's to make a long-lasting break from her retail fix, she needs to find permanent fulfilment elsewhere. Benjamin thinks it might be that the stories discovered in her room are the answer. As well as her tales of Hattie the shopaholic, Caroline has also dabbled with children's stories. If Benjamin can tap into this creative well, perhaps she'll no longer resort to shopping for her adrenaline rush. Yeah, I enjoy doing the writing and stuff, but I always just think it's a bit silly, so I don't yeah. like to talk about it. <laughs> Are you a bit worried what other people might think about what yeah. you've written? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think that for you, with your personality and your interests, I think sharing a creative endeavour is something that would be quite authentic for you. Mm. And what do you think? Yeah, I guess I, mean, I know that that's something I'm, you know, I like doing, but then... Um, I just think about the future and having a career and I always think, I don't know, it's a bit of a silly sort of way to go. I think people think, oh, you know, it's not a real job. And Yeah, because you come from a very practical, hard-working background mm. where there's a real sense that you work hard, you do mm. something practical and that's how you get on in life. Mm. So I want you to think about using this time as a student valuably to explore your creativity and explore those sides of you that maybe don't fit into the family work ethic. And what I want you to do is dig out your favourite children's story that you've written and I want you to go and find some children and I want you to read that story to them and then I want you to sit down and listen to what they have to say about it. <laughs> How would that feel? Yeah, I guess that would be good. Benjamin's been encouraging me to be like more creative and because creativity is like so powerful and like a million times more powerful to than what you look like externally. I mean, like if you know, if you go to a dinner party, do you want to be be with someone who looks gorgeous and is just really dull, or do you want to be someone who can sort of express himself and is really creative? Benjamin suspects that Caroline's shopping is a quick fix, and that the same buzz could be achieved more healthily from letting loose with her creative side. He's brought Caroline to a primary school in Loughborough for the ultimate test, to read her stories to a class of five-year-olds. So, Caroline, this is the big moment. You're actually going to reveal your story live in front of a group of five-year-olds. Are you nervous about that? Yes, I am, really. I'm not yeah. really quite sure why I'm nervous, but um, uh. I guess kids are the most honest, aren't they? So. Yeah, well, I'm quite nervous just to be in a room full of five-year-olds, so I think for you <laughs> to be reading your story to them, 
and actually risking expressing your own mm. most intimate creativity. It's quite a big deal. Yeah. Does it feel <laughs> like you're finally putting something out there that you've been yeah. keeping to yourself for a long time? Because I've been writing all these stories and it's no point me just having them sort of written all, you know, in my computer. I might as well just try them out, so yeah. Well, let's go yeah. on in and give it to them. Caroline has spent much of the last week composing a story especially for the children. She's been writing on and off for most of her life, but this will be the first time she's ever read one in front of an audience. This is Caroline Reader, and she's come along this afternoon to read her story to you. OK, it's um, a little story about two little fairies. One's called Tinky and one's called Fiddle. Benjamin suspects that the story contains hidden messages that explain the origins of Caroline's competitive urge. And Tinky and Fiddle were getting ready for bed. Stories reveal a great deal about people. The, the author of the story inevitably puts her own unconscious story into the narrative. Tinky and Fiddle had very different ideas about Christmas. Fiddle loved Christmas because he was an elf and every Christmas he was asked to go and help Santa sort out all the presents for the little boys and girls across the world. Tinky, however, she didn't like it at all. She was a fairy and it was her job to sit on top of the Christmas tree whilst Fiddle was having all that fun in Lapland. I really see the sibling rivalry at the outset of the story. I see Tinky and Fiddle as possibly the sisters and Tinky's always stuck at home, not allowed to go out while Fiddle gets to do the good stuff. Which is of course exactly what Caroline told me happened with her and her much older sister when they were younger. Tinky was growing more and more angry. It is not fair that Fiddle should have all this fun, she thought to herself. I must think of a way to get to Lapland. She's envious of her sister's lifestyle. Her sister is able to go out effectively to the North Pole and play with magic and go and prepare for Christmas. Now, Caroline is effectively Tink, stuck at the top of the Christmas tree, not allowed to go anywhere. So what does she do? I know, thought Tinky, mischievously. If I wear Fiddle's outfit tomorrow, then I can pretend that I am him and I can go to Lapland. She takes Fiddle's clothes, i.e. the credit cards and literally the clothes of an older person, and goes out to the North Pole, but she uses the wrong words and it all ends up a bigger mess than before. The soldiers were fighting the aliens, the dolls were arguing with the teddy bears, and the trains were racing with the toy cars. I need some help, screamed Tinky. I need Fiddle. And then the magic is used more successfully by the more competent and skilled Fiddle. And shouted, toys change back. And when he opened his eyes, the room was still. They both yawned, got into bed and fell asleep very quickly. This was definitely a Christmas they would never forget. Do we love Tinkle and Fiddles? Yeah! <laughs> so, who's going to give the storyteller a big hug and a kiss and say thank you? Hugging! <laughs> Does that experience give you any different reflections on your career path and the things you're going to try and take forward when you leave university? Uh, yeah, it just makes me really more want to sort of follow my dream and do actually what I want to do. Because really? at the moment, you know, the degree I'm doing is sort of very business orientated. The more things I do like this, and the more writing I do, the more I just want to do that. It's great. Mm. Well, I'm delighted that it's given you some validation in that area, because I think that's what you really needed. Mm. But I think you really do have some special creative qualities in you. And it's quite hard sometimes to find the validation for that if people that you're around don't necessarily yeah. understand it. But kids never lie, <laughs> and they're great people to take creative stuff to. Caroline has listened to Benjamin's theory about her children's story perhaps unconsciously expressing the tensions with her sister. So now is a good time to suggest one final challenge for her to face in order to understand her spending addiction. I think you've done really well with the creative stuff. I'm really pleased with the way that's gone. We haven't touched much on family themes, and I think there's something you could do there with your sister, to go and talk to her about the sibling rivalry. It'd be interesting to see what her reflections on that are. Okay. What do you think? Yeah, I think that's fine. All right, good. Caroline has arranged to meet sister Charlotte at her family home in East Yorkshire, where she lives with her partner and two children. During the week, Charlotte works in Paris as a marketing director for a big multinational company. Caroline needs to find out if trying to emulate her older sister's glamorous lifestyle, without the income to support it, is at the root of her spending problem. It sounds very glamorous, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily a glamorous lifestyle. I spend most of my time in airport lounges on aeroplanes waiting for delayed aircraft or trains. So it's not as glamorous as it sounds. 
If Caroline is finally to move on and away from her addiction to shopping, she needs to realise that material success comes at a price. Well, I think I have got my shopping habits off you and Mum, cos you were the worst. When... Am I? Well, you were. Well, you still are now. Yeah, but Caroline, I've been working since I was 18. Yeah, I know. But that's... Cos, you see, yeah, cos I've gone to uni, I... I don't know, I haven't got any money, so I can't really do the same, which well, is a bit that... annoying. Well, yeah, it might be annoying, but there's a lot of things I haven't been able to do. You know, from not going to university, I've always worked and had responsibility. Mm. Um, I had a mortgage at 18, I had a house. I know, but I really want that. When you had that house in London and you were doing all these things that were amazing and... Yeah, but it's not as good as it's I know, all I don't see that. I only see the good things. Cause... Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so does everyone, to be honest. But it's not kind of, like, fantastic. I mean, even sort of working in the job I'm in now, you know, behind the scenes, you know, I miss my family incredibly. Mm. You say you're lonely at university. God, you've got no idea what it's like to be 600 miles away from, well, more away from your family, especially mm. Sebastian and Hattie and Angus sort of four nights a week. Um, you know, kind of the big corporate rat race isn't all sort of cut... You know, it's not what it's uh, sort of all glammed up to be, really. I know, well, that's why I don't even really want to do things like that, but when I tell you what I do, you always get really annoyed because you don't think it's very good. Yeah, but I always tell you to do what you want to do, what you're good at. You'd be great at doing something like creative writing. I mean, you sent me articles before that... I'm really fat of and I actually don't believe you've written them. But I'm sure you have. <laughs> so they're great. I mean, you, you know, fat, you'll be a success at whatever you do. Following in my footsteps, I would say kind of knowing you definitely isn't mm. the right thing for you. Until now, Caroline has been heading towards a career in business, studying retail management at university. But the lessons of the past weeks have made Caroline feel differently about her plans. I think the fact that I'm actually doing a course that I don't really enjoy sort of makes me want to um, do other things to sort of escape that fact. If you know what I mean, I don't know, so maybe I do go shopping because just because I feel like I'm not enjoying what I'm doing and, and that's why I write stories as well, sort of in my spare time, just because I have to let my creative side out, which I can't do in my study. Um, so I think if I'd actually done a course like English or you know, drama, I'd been so much more happy at uni and really got involved. Um, so doing things like this just makes me even more confident. That's what I want to do in life. 270. So nice. Imagine me walking around uni in that. When Benjamin and Jay first met Caroline, she was a shopaholic and £14,000 in debt. Now, five weeks after their first visit, Benjamin and Jay have returned to Loughborough for the final time to see what Caroline has learnt. Come in. Caroline. Oh, hi, How are you doing, son? Hello. Hello. How are you? Nice to see you. Thank you. Oh, it looks very neat in here. Yeah, yeah tidy around. Let's do a quick wardrobe you check. Checking. Check that there's no yeah, new thousands you of won't designer find anything. things. <laughs> looks like you've been doing really well with that. Yeah. How have you been getting on with your customising? Yeah, really well. Have been you? Been going crazy with it. Tomorrow. This is pretty cool. I know. I've got myself a little sewing machine, so I've been and going mad you? with all the yeah. air. <laughs> How long did it take you to do that? Not long, about an hour. This is a much it's more constructive way to express your creativity it's with lovely, clothes, isn't, isn't it? Because there's part of shopping where you're just bringing stuff into the home to experiment mm. with, whereas this, I think, is adding to your sense of well-being by doing something you're proud mm. of, and at the same time you get more interesting clothes out of it. Well, the proof is definitely, you know, on the bank statements. And when we first met you, you were spending £200 a month mm. on clothes. I know your recommended amount to spend was zero. I really had no interest in shopping. Really? Yeah, like I've, I've bought one pair of boots, which are a te tenner, <laughs> and that's it. It's been quite weird. I mean, I've been mm. going... I went shopping in London with my friend last week, Helen, and... Um, so you're just like, what's wrong with you? Because I was just not interested. But going to shops gave me sort of like a sick feeling in my stomach. Mm. I also know that you've done very well on your travel budget. Because, mm -hmm. for example, you were budgeted to spend £59 on the train and, in fact, you spent... 50 Ah, that's very <laughs> that's good. That's pretty good. That's very good. From my point of view, I see a transformation in you in that I've seen you bring out your creative side and I think that was something you were longing to do. Of course, when we met you, you'd been doing writing and stuff, but you'd never mm. really taken it out into the public. And I think now with the clothes and the writing and the kids in the school, 
really seen a change which has filtered through. In the future, do you have any plans to continue with these creative projects of yours? Yeah, hopefully. I mean, um, before I met you, I hadn't, I'd been doing a little bit on the side, but nothing really too serious. And of course, because my degree is really sort of business orientated, I guess I thought that's the way it had to really go. And I hadn't really thought about doing anything creative in, in my career. Mm. Um, but, you know, the, the things I've done with the kids and my stories and making clothes, it's really made me want to sort of follow that route. I think you've done really well and I think now, I, I don't think if I suddenly came back in six months' time that you're mm. going to think, great, they're out the door no. and reverse everything. No. Yeah, I that's, think... what, that's what my mum was saying, because we were having a bit of a chat and she was like, oh, you know, it's coming to an end, do you think you'll just mm. go back to normal? And I really, really don't. Yeah. I really think I've changed. Throughout this whole journey, I mean, it's been up and down and whatever, but I mean, the whole creative thing has been amazing and I've had, you know, a chance to do a lot of things that, you know, I wouldn't ever have dreamt that I could do, especially reading to the kids and, you know, that was just fab. And, um, yeah, and I do would really love to follow a career in writing. I mean, that would be my dream come true. But if it wasn't to happen, at least I'll always have it there to um, do on the sideline and, you know, it'll give me a lot of fulfilment. So... Thank you. <laughs>